What's going on guys? Ben from JK Gear and Gadgets and welcome back to the fourth episode of the JK One Ton Swap video series. As you can tell, we have the swap kit welded onto our rear 14 bolt. This was a lot of fun, a lot of work, but the outcome is awesome. I went with the Barnes four wheel drive rear truss for a few reasons. Number one, the price, $391, is well below some of the other competitors. Secondly, they incorporate a full truss with the brackets that key into the truss. It makes it really easy to install. It's almost impossible to mess up. I really do like the full truss because it adds strength, opposed to some of the other ones that just have the truss bridge and have the brackets welded onto the axle housing. In this video, we're gonna do step by step on how to get this installed, welded just like this with a perfect outcome. Hopefully you stick around, whether you're doing this swap on a JK, a TJ, an XJ, or you just wanna learn a little more about welding a truss onto any axle, whether it's the stock Dana 44, uh, Dana 30 up front, a lot of the same principles go into that. I will say that the beginning of this video kind of starts off abruptly, and the reason for that is because when I first started filming, I included the portion on how to remove your hubs not really necessary for this, but I figured I'd throw it in. I went back and started editing this video and it was kind of dragging the video on and added an extra like seven minutes to the video. If you're interested on how to remove your hubs, there's already a ton of videos on that. It's pretty straightforward. So I felt like it wasn't really needed in this video. So that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and dive on into the video and see how to weld your swap kit onto your rear axle. If you have any questions, just go ahead and comment it. I'll do my best to get back to you. And don't forget, give the video a thumbs up. Let's do it. It's time to start looking at the truss and setting this up to get ready to be prepped and welded on. Now, I've been messing with this for a couple days and I've had to make a few minor adjustments. Uh, to get this truss centered, you know, you measure from the outer flange here to the edge as well on that side to make sure it's perfectly centered. I had to actually grind a little bit of the casting right there just because the truss was kind of hitting it, preventing me from moving it side to side. So I grind that, that down about an eighth of an inch and we're able to center it perfectly. I also messed around with these upper control arm brackets. Barnes includes these, of course, because it's part of the swap kit, but they give you a new bolt and a new low profile nut, which is awesome because once we weld this on, as you can tell, the caliper bracket right here barely clears where this bolt goes and the nut. Now, it does look like it would clear now, but to make it easier in the future, in case I ever have an issue putting a, you know, a wrench on it, I'm gonna grind down this caliper bracket right where this elbow is, about an eighth of an inch. I'm also gonna do that exact same thing on this side because the clearance issue is very similar over here. So that'll make it a lot easier in the future if you just grind down a little bit right here. So, so far, to make this, uh, truss work all we have to do is grind a little bit off the bracket and I had to do a little bit off the diff you might have to do it on both sides I only had to do it on this side uh, to make this nice and centered now talking about centering it's very easy to measure from this side and that side and get it perfectly centered the big big deal is getting this truss welded on with the proper pinion angle now to figure out your pinion angle it's extremely hard without actually putting this axle under the jeep because with a double carbon shaft uh, which had like two u-joints at the uh, transfer case output and a single u-joint down here at the yoke that's what you're going to want to run to prevent you know any uh, driveline vibrations or any of that stuff but those require a perfect pinion angle and what that means is this output yoke needs to be pointed directly at your transfer case output it's kind of hard to do that with the axle sitting here and our good axle or our stock axle sitting in the Jeep. So what I recommend is getting an angle finder or download a little smartphone app and go underneath your Jeep and put this right on your drive shaft. So let's say I'm outside, put it on my drive shaft. Okay, we're reading 12 degrees. You're gonna subtract one or two degrees because your pinion wants to sit one or two degrees lower than your drive shaft angle, just because under torque, the pinion rotates up a little bit. So go out, measure your drive shaft, find that number. Let's say it's 12. We're gonna wanna set this roughly around 10 or nine. Remember, subtract two, and that's kind of what our baseline for this pinion angle is gonna be. Now, if you're lifting your Jeep higher when you do this swap, go ahead and increase that pinion angle by a degree or two, just because you're increasing that angle. But if you're pretty much keeping the same setup, keep that pinion angle pretty much close to what your current drive shaft angle is. So I need to set mine up. I went out and measured mine and I'm around 10 or 11 degrees on my drive shaft. So we are gonna set our pinion angle when we weld this truss on 
at eight or nine degrees. Now the easiest way to measure pinion angle on the 14 bolt is to remove two of the uh, pinion support nuts or bolts. And uh, you can either use a little magnetic angle finder, angle finder, wow, angle finder or the smartphone app. So let's make sure it's nice and level, set it down, zero it out. We're zeroed out. I'm gonna stick it right on there. And let's see what our pinion angle is. I'm reading 81.9 out of 90. That's right at eight degrees. Um, and that's that's good for me. I'm down for that. Since we're gonna be putting adjustable control arms on, we can still adjust that pinion angle. Now the reason we're finding our pinion angle is so we can weld this truss on nice and level so our springs don't bow out once we rotate the pinion up, our control arms, all that stuff. We wanna make sure this truss top is nice and level. So I'm gonna leave that on there just to monitor, make sure this doesn't change. I'm using a piece of wood. I'm gonna grab my phone. break out the angle finder and check the level of the truss right there we're at zero degrees so that's a nice flat top truss this is how we are going to want to tack it on um, definitely play around with it make sure your pinion angle is right before we actually weld this on double check it triple check it but how it's set up now is pretty good to go we just need to make sure i didn't move it over a little bit messing with it so we're going to center it up make sure our pinion angles are all good and tack this baby on but first grind this down a little bit sorry for all the noise got the washer and dryer going got household duties to obtain but i took the truss off let's take a look i want to show you guys what i grinded down i could smooth this up a little bit but honestly i'm not worried about it. it's gonna be covered by the truss i also went ahead and grinded down these caliper brackets as you can tell nice and even about an eighth of an inch and i mocked it up no clearance issues with uh, <clears throat> the upper control arm bolts or nuts so i'm gonna go ahead and clean that up and paint it with, of course, my steel it. And now is the great time to go ahead and paint the underside of our truss. Because as you can imagine, once this truss is sitting on there, it's pretty much impossible to paint the underneath side. So that's why I'm going with steel it, just because it's weldable. Um, it's a great paint for projects like this. So I'm gonna take it outside, hit the bottom of the truss and a little bit of the edges with the steel it paint, let it dry, Come back in here, we're gonna measure our pinion angle one more time and tack it into place. But I gotta wait for my dryer to finish because that's where my 220 outlet is for the welder. So let's get this all prepped up, throw some paint down and then start welding on this truss. Inside of the truss has been painted with steel it and we are good to go. Went ahead and got all the edges and that full bottom plate. We're gonna go ahead and put this on. And now is the time to really triple check our measurements. My OCD is starting to kick in. I just triple checked and I keep making tiny little adjustments. Pinion angle is now at like 7.7 .7 and we do have a level top truss. Each time I loosen the clamp, something changes, but pinion angle is good. We have a level truss and it is even lengthwise. So it's time to tack it in place. We're gonna tack all four corners, a nice heavy tack um, just so it doesn't move it all and we're gonna have to be able to pull the axle out so we can actually start welding it a lot more so let's tack it in place call it good So we just got the truss tacked down. You really wanna hit each corner, front and back, and then a little spot here in the center as well, just to prevent it from springing up. Double check the measurements. They are still where we started, so we're good. Go ahead and get these out of here. Let this cool down for a little bit and go ahead and remove the clamps. And it shouldn't pop up. Make sure your, uh, your tacks are strong enough to hold this in place because I'm gonna move this out so we can flip the truss around and uh, tack it in a few more spots just to make sure it doesn't move. Um, not really tacks, more of like, you know, little uh, half inch weld areas on each corner where I just tacked it. After tacking down the truss, I let it cool for about 10 minutes and now it's time to start adding stuff to the truss. 
the first thing we do, uh, of course, everything is step by step with this Barnes kit. Uh, they co it comes with an instruction manual, so you really can't mess up. It tells you exactly what to do. But the first thing I did was go ahead and weld on this coil spring bucket over here on the passenger side. I still have um, this side to go, but I wanted to get one side done before I recorded this to show you guys some tips and tricks. So this is what the pieces look like. As you can tell, um, these are the two side pieces, and this is the top piece. The first thing we're gonna do is weld this nut onto here. Little tip, um, it is a nylock nut, so turn down the settings on your welder, and uh, you don't have to do a full weld, just a few tacks on each corner will be plenty. I went ahead and tightened the bolt and nut down just so it's not moving at all. It's gonna make it a lot easier. Now we can just throw our clamp on and tack weld it without worrying about our nut floating around in there. Might help if I turn the welder on. I'm talking about that nylon insert uh, there's no way around it it's gonna burn up oh well I know I said try to avoid that but I just tried and that catches on pretty quick uh, the only way to really avoid that was be doing you know a bunch of little tack welds and ain't nobody got time for that so yeah that's gross we'll have to clean that up but no biggie throw these gloves on because it's probably hot and I'm gonna go ahead and make one more weld on this side just so that nut is nice and tight. <laughs> Woo! Okay, yeah, that's really hot. Wow. Holy moly. I don't think I turned down the welder enough. All right. Oh, well. Let's let this cool. And, uh... Woo! Ah! <laughs> Man, I'm all over the place. Ooh, okay, that is hot. Don't weld it that much, wow. Now that we have our nut welded on, it's time to assemble these two pieces. These two pieces have little cutouts right in the top. We want those to go up. So simply slide that in there. That's gonna go in there. We're gonna put the nut down. And all this right there is gonna get welded together before we do that you know I gotta say it we're gonna hit it with steel it because all this in here is unpainted metal right around this corner I want to go ahead and hit it with steel it you guys can hopefully you've started to see by now the reason I really liked using steel it for this project so nice little layer I'm also gonna paint the inside where these go in just so it's not bare metal We're gonna tack it on a few sides, tack it up here, and weld all the seams together. And our coil bucket welded in place. Coil pads and retainers are welded on the truss and our next step is going to be focusing on this rear track bar bracket. Now it comes in two pieces, extremely simple to assemble. It keys in on the back, just like that, boom. Now, one thing when welding track bar brackets and other mounts like this that you can honestly almost mess up, a big thing I recommend is to get whatever you're mounting it to and use it when you're mounting it or when you're welding it together. So this is actually an old track bar end of mine. So I'm gonna use this. But if you don't have just a simple end, I'd highly recommend going to your Jeep and pulling your rear track bar. So when we weld this together, we can make sure it is the correct mounting distance. You don't want to start welding it and then this thing bend in a little bit. And when you go to put your track bar in, it's not gonna fit. You see what I'm saying? All 
All right, so I just tacked it in place and I can already tell that there is a little side to side movement on this track bar. So what I'm gonna do before I weld it up anymore is grab a clamp and try to suck these edges in a little bit. The good thing is that I would rather this mount be a little bit too wide opposed to being too small. We can really suck this bolt in and it would, uh, it would close that gap or we can use washers. However, if the gap is too small, it's really hard to try to fit a track bar in there. We got a few tacks on there. Let's go ahead and remove the clamp. See how we did. We're just gonna take a look at it and make sure it's nice and parallel all the way down. And we can even bring it over to the axle and make sure it all fits up nice. I'll probably go do that real quick. Track bar is gonna sit right in there. And that all looks good. Sweet. So we're gonna go ahead and weld this bad boy up along the inside and all along the outside. It is almost time for me to take a break. I've been out here for a couple hours welding and it'd be nice to get off my feet for a little bit, but let's take a look at what we have done. So we've done the coil, uh, little coil buckets, we tacked the truss on, and went ahead and tack welded our rear track bar bracket just to the truss itself. Not, not quite yet gonna weld it to the tubes. I don't wanna weld anything to the tubes until the very end once we go over everything and make sure everything's pretty much in perfect alignment. Went ahead and tacked it on the back here. The Barnes kit makes everything really easy to line up. There was a little, uh, little slot up there. You just pop it in, make sure it's straight, and tack it in place. I'm, so far, I'm extremely satisfied with this kit. It makes everything really easy. It's a nice truss system. Barnes has been around for a, quite a while and they've always made great trusses. So I'm, I really like how they incorporated the full truss into this swap kit. But um, if you guys are thinking about doing this, Ben, this is a ton of welding. You don't have to be a professional welder to do this. I'm not. Um, you know, I just started a couple years ago and it's just hobby stuff. As long as you practice and practice and get good pen penetration with your welds, you don't have to be some Instagram famous weld star that, you know, stacks dimes with their TIG. You know, you don't have to do any of that. I mean, as long as you can get, you know, decent welds um, up here, those are pretty ugly. Um, that side didn't come out too well. But, you know, I tried to really cool it down. I didn't want to heat up. That was pretty thin, smaller metal. Um, I'm just rambling on now. But, I mean, inside these brackets, there's going to be some spots that are hard to get to with the MIG gun. So, it, you know, it, you do what you can. Over here on the back side, started the weld off really, really good. And then I think the bracket fell over and I stopped there. Restarted. I mean, but, dude, there's plenty of penetration. The welds are definitely going to hold and you don't have to be a pro. Um, all this stuff, the way it keys together and how much mounting surface it has, the welds are gonna hold. I mean, if you look, if you go and look at your rear track bar from, from the factory or the front for that matter, the front, the factory track bars are welded on one side pretty much the side and the bottom, that's it. With stuff like this, we're gonna be able to weld it on the outside, the inside, inside on this side and outside, and then along the bottom edge as well. Same with the truss and all these brackets. It's it's really designed well, and honestly, I'm, I'm just a big fan of this truss. So I'm gonna take a little break, we'll come back, and we'll knock out the upper control arms, the lower control arms, the shock brackets, and then burn the truss in. So I need to go sit down. We're back, ready for the next portion. I didn't really realize how hungry I was. Went inside, ate a nice meal, and ready to get back at it. So if I can say one piece of advice for all this, take your time, take breaks. If you start, you know, really getting into this, you know, if you've been working on it for eight hours, it's easy to make small mistakes. So take breaks, take a breather, come out here, look at, look at what you're doing, make sure you're not doing anything completely wrong. Like that one guy on Instagram that welded his truss upside down don't be that guy that would just suck so our next step is going to be to weld these upper control arms on extremely easy to place let me go over here on this other side and show you how they're going to go in as you can see one side is curved that's going to go on the axle tube and one side has the square cut out and that's going to go on the truss so we're simply going to position it 
so they both line up as you can tell it's canted out perfect our clearance for our nut is spot on so we're gonna let it sit here we're gonna tack it in place right on the outside and then come back through and weld it I'm not really too worried about welding the outside onto the actual axle tubing just because we'll have these three corners on the inside to weld and this upper corner side and back corner to weld onto the truss. Now, if you did really want to weld this inside corner onto the axle tube, what you would do is remove your pretty much this backing plate for our uh, caliper bracket. I think these are 15 16 you'd pop those off pop this whole assembly off and you'd have access to weld there i'm really not worried about it we're gonna have so much more areas on this truss that are gonna get welded and as long as this is a good weld onto the truss it'll have zero issue so i'm gonna go ahead and just weld it in place right here and still even in the future if i did want to weld this i could always pop these off and finish that weld at a later date but let's go ahead and tack both these sides up and get them burned in Now that it's tacked in, we're just gonna double check and make sure everything is exactly where we want it. Make sure it's squared up on the truss and down on the tube. We're good to go there. We got plenty of clearance for this nut. Burn it in. So as you can tell, got the outside perimeter welded. Now I'm gonna sneak in here and weld the inside. Last night, knocked out a bunch of stuff on the axle. I finished up the upper control arm mounts. And then after that, my GoPro actually ran out of footage. It was like three hours of footage on this thing. So I had to take a break, let this all download to my computer. And then while that was happening, I went ahead and welded the track bar bracket all the way on. I know I said I wasn't gonna do that yet, but you know, I was bored last night, went ahead and welded that on. No need to really get that on camera, it's kinda easy, you just weld it on. If you've made it this far, you can weld the uh, track bar bracket on. But we are pretty close to being done. I'm hoping today we'll be able to finish it up, but we gotta solve the lower control arm issue, right? Barnes includes two big old control arm brackets, as you can tell, oh, nice and beefy built-in skids and shock brackets. Now this right here is the, the OEM configuration and it actually gives you the option to do a high clearance option. So as you can tell, that is a lot more ground clearance. Very similar to what I did in my past video with the Synergy um, you know, shock relocation brackets. You cut off your lower control arms and raise the bracket, the mounting options. Great way to increase your uh, your ground clearance, but it also takes two inches out of your shocks up travel. So you have to, you know, kind of spec your shocks accordingly or get the kits that extend your shocks up on the frame side. In order to do this, all you do is measure two up, two inches up, chop it off, and then they include plates that we are gonna weld in here as little skids right in there. Weld that up and then weld our shock mount bracket on and then weld this bad boy right there to the axle. You wanna make sure you get the one that's angling in towards the pinion. And we're just gonna weld it to the axle tube and as well up here on the T. It doesn't fit up in there, it just sits at a T right there. We're gonna make a weld right there along the side of the truss and on the bottom of the tubes. So, a great option for those that want to do a raised you know, shock bracket. I definitely recommend doing this, especially now that we already have the 13 bolt shave. There's no reason to have a bracket that's gonna hang even lower than that. We wanna keep all the ground clearance that we can. So this one's already cut. I'm gonna cut this other one, weld them together, and let's throw them on the axle.
now that we have our control arm bracket cut, and as you can tell, we just took off a huge chunk of it, we are gonna weld this plate right on the bottom side. I'm not gonna weld it completely level. I'm actually gonna stick it up a little bit just so we have plenty of room for our control arm to sit up in there once it's time to throw our control arms in. Ow, that hurt. So I'm gonna throw some little magnets in here just to hold it up. Just weld this in place. Birdie. Ooh la la. So it's nice. I mean, I can almost tell that I'm getting better as, at welding as we go. So it's awesome that, you know, once we get to the front axle, I'm not saying that my welds have been bad on this axle, but definitely getting a lot better, which means the front axle is just going to be a piece of cake. Now that we have the bottom plate welded in, there's really no need to weld the inside. You could if you want, but this is just the lower skid plate and having three welds across the, uh, the top plate will be more than enough. So now we are going to weld in, oh man, got, my, got some catching on fire over here. Woo. All right, like I was saying, now that we have that welded, we can weld in our shock mount. It's just gonna sit right there in the tab and sit flush with the control arm. So we're gonna tack this in and then burn it in. Now that we have the shock bracket welded up, I welded it all the way on the outside and a little bit on the inside here. I didn't want the welds interfering with the way the shock is gonna mount in there. So there's really no need to weld that full entire string on the inside. But what we have to do now is weld our sway bar control arm, Ugh, our sway bar mount right here. It's hard to see on the camera, but they have a little line right where this guy's gonna weld onto. So once again, we're gonna pop it right in there, try to make it as level as possible. The best way is probably just to hold it and tack it in place and try to get it nice and level. That looks pretty good, tack it on this side. Double check it. That looks pretty good to me. We'll go ahead and weld that in. Control arm, shock, and sway bar tabs are all done. All we have left is to weld them onto the axle. But it sounds like I'm running low on welding wire. I have another spool right up there, so I'm gonna go ahead and change that out just so I don't run, you know, run out halfway through the weld of welding it on the axle. So, so far I've went through one two pound spool of welding wire, which isn't expensive, that's like 20 bucks. And it pretty much did this entire axle. Plus, what else? Uh, welding the 13 bolt diff cover, filling those holes, and a bunch of other little projects I did before I actually started this out. So, not I'm expecting going through probably $50 of welding wire. I'm probably gonna go through a whole tank of gas, and that's like 35 bucks. So if you have if you plan on having a buddy come over and help you weld all this with his welder and gas, give him some money. I mean, you're looking at $20 just in welding wire, probably 35 bucks in gas. I mean, just then this is a lot of work to weld. So I would expect your buddy to come over and weld it for you for free. Give him some money. It's definitely worth it. It's very labor intensive. So let's wait for this to cool. I'm going to go uh, re-spool my welding machine and then we'll... Uh, tackle getting those welded on the axle so I still have a tiny little bit of welding wire on there enough to tack this up I really want to use all that before we switch over to the uh, the bigger roll but this is cool we're able to touch it now what we're gonna do is line it up down here with the axle tube and slide it up so it keys right on top there that's where we're gonna weld this in. We wanna make sure we have the right brackets on the right side. As you can tell, the uh, shock brackets are canted towards the diff, and the actual bracket itself is canted in towards the pinion. So that's gonna be over here on the passenger side. We're gonna set this up, tack it in place, go ahead and tack the other side in place, 
and pretty much weld as much as I can with that little bit of wire left and then switch it over to the big roll and really burn these in. this up. I'm going to finish welding up here to the top of the truss, flip the axle over and weld this bottom part to the axle tube. We want to make sure that we're not overheating this axle tube so we can split this weld probably in half, let it cool, go to the other side, come back and do the other side. You just want to alternate where you're welding so you're not putting too much heat in one spot on the axle. We are so close to being done. Got the lower control arms all welded in. Upper control arms are done. Cool spring pads are done. Pretty much everything is welded on the axle. All we have left to do is finish off welding the actual truss to the axle. Now this step, we really want to take slow because this is where it's going to build up a lot of heat on the axle. As you can tell, you know, it's right now it's only in one, two, three, four, like eight tack welds plus the track bar bracket and the lower control arm mounts but we need to go through and weld not the entire thing we don't have to weld this entire section but what i'm going to do is you know for example weld this area here let that cool for you know a minute or two come over here weld this side flip the axle over and weld over here the end goal i'm probably going to weld about three inches here three inches here a little section here. I'm not going to do a full weld all the way across the bottom because that's it's a little excessive. You don't have to do all that. Just because it's sitting there does not mean we have to weld all those surfaces. Now, like I said, you want to take take your time doing this. Skip around the axle, let it cool. This portion should probably take 30 or 40 minutes, maybe an hour, because the last thing you want to do is really heat up, you know, too much of a section and possibly warp the axle or just heat it up too much where you lose the strength of the metal. I really don't see this axle bending just because the truss is sitting flat all the way across and we haven't welded up here on the cast yet. And speaking of welding the cast, that's gonna be the last step. I'm not gonna include that in this video because that is its own portion. Uh, there's a special procedure welding up here along these creases and on the diff portion. I'm gonna save that until we actually start doing it on the uh, front axle as well because we need to preheat it, post heat it, and really there's kind of a special way to weld all this now we don't have to weld the full seam up here but we do need to make welds along the top down here on the bottom and it's gonna be the same procedure for the front that's that honestly is gonna be like a 30 minute video within itself so I'm not gonna include that this time and plus due to the government shutdown I'm broke so I <laughs> I need to go buy new map gas I need to buy uh, infrared thermometer and I need to buy welding blankets to he uh, keep that heat slowly cooling down so Right now, I don't have the money to do that. I've already spent all my money on this uh, swap kit. So, I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, the government doesn't stay shut down for too long so I can keep this project going. But let's go ahead and slowly start welding this truss onto the tube. But real quick, take a look at the steel it. So, past videos, um, I steel it. I, I painted this whole tube. You can tell where it's you know rubbed off from flipping this truss over and over, and I expect that. But you can tell where I welded right here, just with the little tack weld, how it doesn't really burn through the paint. It did a little bit around the edges, but it's extremely easy to weld to. And when we're done welding, just hit it with another coat. And it, you know, I was expecting it to kind of burn about an inch away, but that did a really good job, especially, I mean, pretty much all the welds where the steel it was. Extremely happy with that. But that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and start welding up this truss to the tube. Just finished up welding the axle. It's pretty much all done except for the next step where we have to weld to the cast. But it's still cooling down 
and as you can tell I just did little stitch welds all the way across and it's like that all the way on the other side as well um, this side I welded right here this side's pretty much all welded just because it's not that spread apart but over on this side there's no need to put a full weld all the way across that is plenty but the swap truss kit is done we have everything welded on it's it's pretty much ready to go like I said this will be a third time I said it the next video not the next video but once we do the swap truss on the front we will weld to this cast steel and then weld up these little little seams where they fold the metal really want to leave those open until we weld all this to allow this to flex as needed and once it's welded down we'll fill this in probably come in and do another weld down here but I want all this to get welded like I said I still have to go buy more supplies but I am very very satisfied with how easy this went together as you can tell there's definitely a lot of steps in it but actually doing it very simple it's lined up for you it's all keyed honestly I mean if I wasn't recording this I could probably do this in a couple hours, but you know, having the GoPro reposition it to get some good footage takes up a lot of time. But overall, I'm ex very satisfied with this. For what was it, $391? Not bad at all. It's a lot better than trying to make all these brackets yourself. I wouldn't even want to imagine trying to do that and you know, get the correct brackets, line them up. I've heard of some people doing that to try to save money, but honestly, in the end, you probably only save 50 bucks, and that would take a lot of time to make sure everything's jigged up right. All the angles are correct this this way this is the way to go guys so current price point what are we at we had 190 bucks for the diff cover and 390 for the truss let's see what is that that's like uh, let's round that up to 400 we're almost around 580 uh, sorry if my math's wrong but 580 for that we've been through about 20 dollars we're about 600 dollars into the rear axle plus the axle itself which is 100 bucks so 700 bucks and as you can tell, as it sits now, technically it's almost ready to put under the Jeep, but we still have to go in here, do the gears, do the lockers, probably keep these shafts from now. I gotta figure out the brake situation because I don't have brakes, no rotors or calipers or pads or anything. I don't know if I'm gonna do an upgrade or just keep them stock, but we'll see. But this rear axle is definitely coming into place. And next we are gonna start working on the front axle. That'll be fun. A lot of this will be very similar but we will have to do a few little different things, you know, make our caster and pinion angle happy. Whereas the rear, we only really had to worry about our pinion angle. So stay tuned for the next episode, guys. Thanks for watching. Like always, give this a big old thumbs up. Let me know what you think about this truss in the comments. And if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Peace.